Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we got another solo album review, this time of the sophomore project from Sunday's Inner Coast. So here's one of the hardest things to reckon with as a critic that's a little smaller online. You find a debut album pretty much by accident on Bandcamp, the opening track kind of blows your mind, and then you happen to discover that the album itself just might happen to be one of the best of its respective year. And while I would never claim to be responsible for breaking any acts, I do know that my reviews have led to some of the most coverage that some of these acts have seen, which can be both a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, it is the best possible example of using one platform well. I get to talk about an album that's just flat out wonderful, give them more exposure, and then they get that exposure and more acclaim and possibly even fans as a result. It's a win-win for everyone involved. But the other side of it is that you set yourself a standard and some expectations that might feel a little more personal. After all, continuity and expansion require a different and larger set of skills than just creating a brilliant project one time, and they no longer have the benefit of surprise. And when the band is small enough to that you know they might wind up seeing the review again, you wind up feeling more nervous and invested than just covering the follow-up for a debut that caught popular attention as well, where the artist might have moved on to bigger pastures. And in this case... Well, Sundays was one of those bands that always kind of startled me at just how much I liked them. Yeah, a lot of it came down to some fantastic fundamentals across gorgeous mixes and a lot of emotionally intelligent writing and hooks that just seem to keep on coming. God, the melodies are so good. But let's be real. In terms of pure comparisons, you could draw a lot of parallels to early Bon Iver and plenty of other indie folk acts with willowy singers and bright melodies. And when I got word this follow-up, Inner Coast, was going to add in some traces of rock elements to get a little moodier and darker, move some of the subtext of Wiaka to actual text, but really go on the darker sophomore progression, and, and that they were involving producer Asger Takao, the former drummer of the Danish band Kashmir, who got some acclaim in Scandinavian countries, but were really pretty middle of the road in their time. Yeah, I'll say it, I was worried about how well this might turn out. And yeah, a big part of it was also me grappling with how we probably were not going to get another Shade of the Pines, one of my favorite songs of 2019. But hey, even if it doesn't fall among the best of this year, this could still be great, right? Well, let me put it like this. Yes, Sundays are two for two. This is legit amazing and will probably be among the best albums of 2021. Now, does it have a song that says Pure Magic, A Shade of the Pines? No. Does that mean necessarily that it's worse than Wiaka? Well, initially that was a pretty major thought in my mind because minus that big high point. But the more I thought about Inner Coast, the more I realized that its strengths are in slightly different spaces. Yes, the core fundamentals, they are as fantastic as ever. But I realized pretty quickly that given the evolution and shifts in subject matter and sound, a pure comparison to that debut album kind of misses the full picture. More of a lateral shift that I think the band might get credit, especially the more you dig into some of the details. And that was something I needed to come around with the more listens I gave it. So even if it's fantastic, it's for a lot of different reasons. And to explain that, we have to start off with the front man with a gorgeous falsetto, Magnus Jacobson, and revisit the arc of Wiaka a little bit, and some of the darkness on that album that may have gone overlooked. Now, the biggest strength of that content on that album is that it could work in two distinctive lanes, leaning into a lot of the effervescent shimmer of the love-struck yearning moments that were so charming, but also digging around the edges into the self-consumed angst and the self-pity that forces our protagonist here to actually grow up a bit over the course of the album when he stops getting everything he wants. The power of the album came in being able to do both effectively. And I think a good word to describe Wiaka might be therapeutic, especially in leaning into how the art has allowed him the space to explore and to come to grips with a lot of these emotions, and also accept the real-life consequences with a little bit of newfound maturity. Well, Inner Coast actually picks up a little further down the road, and ask the harder follow-up question, because art might have been the mechanism for his growth, but what happens if it starts to overshadow his relationships? Especially when there's an open question whether or not the relationships were working anyway, and that the art might have a larger impact outside of himself, and deep down, some of that self-obsessed angst hasn't really gone away. The old demons are still there. Hell, in the experience of drilling into one's 
own obsessions and muses, they may have gotten magnified. Now, as a whole, that necessarily means the tone in the presentation has to be darker. Jacobson has said on this project he was encouraged to get a little bit more blunt and raw, maybe even more banal in some of his word choice, and I can see why he might think that. Why seek to cocoon himself in art when there are bigger and more important things to focus on away from it? But while that text is there, there are plenty of those swelling, gleaming moments of multi-tracked harmonies and hooks that reinforce just how potent the attraction to creating art can be. And full disclosure, as someone who has created art and appreciates the whole mystique of inspiration, and may have also been one to self-sabotage a relationship in my past that maybe wasn't the strongest in pursuit of that art, and who has always loved this kind of meta text, yeah, there is a thematic resonance to this project that really sticks to me. I get where he's coming from. That being said, I also appreciate how very early on the album Jacobson sets up the scene and the moral ambiguity. I might not love the opening track Salt of the Earth, but it sets up someone who thinks he's earned his inspiration, but is cautious in what it could bring to him. I like how Shadow Dress and Drifter delves into his tenuous relationship paralleled with his art, both of which force him to get more vulnerable, but still feels kind of fleeting as a result. And all that gives All We Have Is Time so much more tension and power. It's likely one of the best songs on the album. It captures that anxious feeling of being torn across his passions. It's a love song, but it's one that feels precarious as all hell. And like with Wiaka, the love story does seem to hit an end, but I like how, in this case, the feelings are still there, but they're fleeting, they're tough to grasp and conceptualize, left kind of weightless, just like his muse seems to be. And this is where I think the album actually does something kind of ingenious in taking the bigger picture, because you get Song for the Times, which on the surface seems like Sunday's making their bring people together through music song, the sort of hollow cliche that would really raise my eyebrows until you know the little details. How they describe it in the opening lines as a song for the cynics and the critics, who will see right through all of this, framing both sides as having to compromise, but also noting it's a song for the power, implying those who will really see the most to gain if a compromise is made those who still have it. What I like is that the sentiment is so well delivered, it can work even if the inspirational subtext feels hollow, and that leads to the, some of the darkest moments here, where to get to that point of inspiration, our protagonist really needs to confront the hard vulnerabilities one is forced to explore to make something beyond the little whispers and insecurities. And when you hit the raw, dark bleakness of that end, he realizes he needed that human connection way more than he thought he knew, not just for his art, but for himself. The selfishness of his creative process gets punctured. And for the first time, we actually hit some genuine humility, where he knows to confront his trauma, to admit his screw-ups, and make statements that can actually resonate beyond himself. He needs to be willing to give and look outside of himself. It mirrors a segment on Shadow Dress, where he has a real late night conversation and then sees himself for the first time as others do in the eyes of his partner, but then he implodes and panics rather than properly address it. Whereas by Take Me Home, he can say, the truth is just a paraphrase, your interpretation, rather than one that actually includes the bigger picture. Oh, and yeah, the music's fantastic, too. See, that is the funny thing. There is enough layers and depth in Jacobson's writing that you can almost miss the fact that Sunday's is incredibly rich approach to indie folk with a lot of shimmering, bright, ethereal textures, some stunning vocal arrangements with Marie Lalander Henriksen. Seriously, Weightless Feathers is goddamn stunning, and it fits the content perfectly. And I like how he then limited any backing arrangements. They highlight the loneliness of Midnight Passing, but then you get these firm melodic grooves that are still so very much intact maybe even sharper this time around given that unlike Wiaka, this album doesn't feel the need to meander in its midsection or its back half there is a greater sense of urgency that does lead to a few moments i don't quite love i'll say that the album starts off a little slower and colder with that little electric rollick supporting the spare acoustics and the lurking bass on the soul of the earth that almost kind of reminds me of some late 90s prog rock and do show takao's influence which impacts the misty synth arrangement on drifter to better results but 
but then Midnight Passing does feel a little too brittle and kind of swallowed up in its atmosphere as a result. Not one of the best hooks, but a lot of those electric guitar touches only add some smoky bones to the compositions, often stacking songs that already have good melodic hooks with even more of them. And then when you listen, you pick up so many little compositional details as a result. I love how the bridge bends across key changes with some really nice intricacy in the groove on Shadow Dress, and then how Siberia uses the ragged violin touches and some subtly terrific drum work in order to accentuate a lot of the haunted vibes, and a surprisingly bright hook in a major key, which then leads brilliantly into the beautifully understated closer Take Me Home, with a piano and a violin that somehow just winds up just as quietly catchy. And then there's All We Have Is Time, which builds its synth-inflected crescendo so well that it can't help but feel utterly infectious. Even despite that pit-in-your-gut feeling that materializes with that content, it walks that fine wire. And when you factor in that as a whole, it feels tighter, clocking in just over 35 minutes. There's not a wasted moment here. Well, let me put it like this. This was exactly the sort of project I'm so happy to say Sundays was able to make. It expands and deepens the themes and the sounds, and shows a lot of subtle refinement where Wiaka was a debut that had so much stunning, effervescent shimmer that you could occasionally lose track of some of those better details. More importantly, I'd actually argue this is more accessible. More variation in the sound palette, adds a little more character, shows more lanes where the band could develop, a bit more of a varied mood on display, while still maintaining that rock-solid foundation that puts damn near anyone else in indie folk to shame, and especially when they're not chasing trends. This was an album that proved that it wasn't all lightning in a bottle. That is so thrilling, to say the least. And that means getting a light 9 out of 10, absolutely a high recommendation. Again, way too many people are going to sleep on this album. And despite how pillowy many of these tracks are, how comfortable and easy it might be, you should sit up take notice. But yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I'm a little bit surprised that this is when I'm doing a solo review from this project, especially as it's not going to get as many views as another album I just know some people want me to cover and tear into. We'll deal with that later on. But in the meantime, if you'd like to like and subscribe again, very grateful. If you've got your own comments, leave them down there below. I'd be happy to hear them. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you guys want to get involved in my scheduling process so certain albums wind up getting covered, link to my Patreon is right over there. Again, please don't feel obligated. It's tough times out there. I understand. But hell, until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.